Hey guys, I'm Leona, also known as Mrs. Worldwide, and I'm interviewing Crypto Terry today. Hi guys. All right, Crypto Terry, how's your day going? Busy, but I'm good now. Yeah, it's all chill. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit late, guys. Something is going on with my internet, but you know, we're good now. All right, so I know that before your name was I Love Peanut Butter, mm -hmm. then it was I Love Peanut Butter and Crypto, yeah. and now it's Crypto Terry. How yeah. did you go from one to the other? So, um, back during the pandemic, I was playing around with the channel just to be silly, and it was called <laughs> I Love Peanut Butter, and I would, uh, put peanut butter on any food basically and eat it as a challenge. <laughs> and um, it, it got quite expensive to buy food and cook it or or go get it. And, and get, so I got a little bored with it, so I quit. Yeah. And then I started like getting really involved. I had been really involved with crypto before. And then I just want to add the word crypto to what I liked. So I added that channel. And then talking with other people in the crypto business, I thought maybe I'd just change it to, to Crypto Terry. So yeah. once I get my remodeling done in my house, I have a place to actually make real videos, then maybe I could like start a channel and focus on it versus just playing around. Yeah, I got you. I think um, I think that the peanut butter thing was kind of wild. You, you watched <laughs> but, those videos? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't get. I watched. Uh, I clicked on your channel the other day because I didn't know that you had an actual channel. I thought that maybe it was a like yeah, something you did like on tiktok knows. or whatever no nobody knows it's okay yeah no but i remember you saying it because that's where peanut butter came from but i thought it was like a tiktok thing but um the other night i actually clicked on your uh on your channel and i think i subscribed but i didn't get to like actually go through yet but uh yeah peanut butter i mean we definitely were bored <laughs> during the pandemic so <laughs> yeah. that's fine but uh i wouldn't be able to do it i'm allergic to peanuts so <laughs> Or just let me just doing silly stuff, just having fun. That's all. Yeah, yeah. It was there was just like so little to do during the pandemic. So I get it. It could be worse. You could have been doing crazier stuff. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, too old. I'm too old to be crazy. Yeah. Uh speaking of, yes. how old are you? Older than old Nato by by a little bit. I'm but 54. Not older than Chris, oh, Chris Cruzy. Chris Chris Cruzy and, and Odie or Tim and then myself, we're all fifty four. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And Dano's, he's he's only fifty, so you know he's a young buck. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, sure, why not, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> he's cool though. I think he's uh he's at a good age for for life and for me. Um, so what? Yeah, when you were doing the peanut butter stuff, like what even made you do that? Was that like an idea your kids liked? Or? No, my daughter. Okay, so my daughter, who's now fifteen, um, was. She had a YouTube channel and she's trying to like do crazy stuff. <laughs> and she started doing um, a pivot okay. challenge. And she, although it was very creative, was very shy in presentation. So she'd bring me on and it'd be a challenge. Oh. And I'd be like the over the top commentator, right, right. Out or loving it, just to like build her, her following up. Mm -hmm. And then once she started bringing her friends over, we were doing it. Her channel picked up speed and then she got bored. Mm -hmm. I'll just do it. So what? It, typical, yeah. typical. That's cool though. So you're like a nice, supportive father. Yep, I like yeah. that. Um, how many kids do you have? The three daughters. Oh, you're a total girl dad. The only way I want it. No boys for me. Oh, see, I'm the opposite. I did not want girls. <laughs> well, I, I'm one of five boys. So there you go. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. There's there's five of us, but uh, there's three girls and two boys. Yeah. So I was. I just, you know, this is a little bit easier. I didn't want to have to do hair, but both of them ended up having long hair and not wanting to cut it. So I was like, I ended up having to do hair anyway. So right. <laughs> it was just like, whatever. Okay. You get what you get, you know? Yeah, but, I mean, I'd be happy either way. I just, uh, overly athletic and didn't want to be that ath athletic father afterwards. You know what I'm saying? So. Oh, I got you. That's okay. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Let's go over to the comments and see who's here. We got uh, Curly86 says, hi there. Hey, Curly. Come at, come at her picture. Every time I see that picture, I know that's a heart around her face, but yeah. it reminds me of Wonder Woman. Look, yeah, yeah, yeah I can see, see that. Every time I see it, yep. 
I think that's cool. It's like a, like a baby Wonder Woman, though. <laughs> well, just, just like the crown, the crown thing. You yeah, know? no, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, if there was color to it, if it was like yeah. red or gold or whatever. Yeah. yeah, I could totally see that. Um, Lady Bex, go Greek. Okay, hi, Greek. Okay. Yeah, go hi, Greek. Greek, <laughs> Greek yoga. Oh, maybe Greek. Oh, maybe Greek was in there and it got and it disappeared. Uh, long because yeah, because Compton, Compton saying what's up, Greek. <laughs> hi, Greek. <laughs> hi, Compton. Hi, Compton. And, and Biz Entertainment says, have a great show with some peanut butter. Yeah, did you bring any peanut butter for the show? <laughs> no, I can go get it if you want me to. <laughs> I get a spoon in a jar. I'm good to go. Yeah, man. Uh, Sharon Savari says, hi. Hi, Sharon. Vulcan Dell, hi, all. That guy in San Francisco says number two. Not really. <laughs> Chris Cruzy Lie says, what's, I guess, what's up, Terry? Jam Rock says, hey, all. There's Chris Cruzy saying hi to everybody as well. And there's the Greek. He made it at the end. Um, okay. So let's go to some other questions. Are you married? Yeah. 30 years. This wow. Year. 30 years. Yeah. 30 years this so, year. Like when? June twelfth. All right, so it could be during the, like the little the Vulcan Vegas thing. Yeah, that you're gonna bring her out there. And then June twenty fifth, her birthday. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's yeah. If cool. it blows up and she wants to go, then we'll book tickets. We'll go. Yeah. Yeah. Vegas. That's cool. Well, uh, if, if Rick Springfield's playing anywhere, she'll go. Other than that, it's hard to get her to go to Vegas. Rick Springfield. I don't know. <laughs> that's that's her, that's her dude, Rick Springfield. Is he, is he out there like that still? No, he used to be. He used to be like one, in one of the yeah, shows. Yeah. Where he's like like always there, but he's not there anymore. Yeah, he's he's got to be old now, right? Seventy something, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's still touring though, but, but she likes Rick Springfield. So I find that to be insane. I don't know what I'd be doing at seventy, but um, I guess if I was a performer, I'd probably still make it happen. Yeah, but. he looks good though. If you look him up and see what he does, he looks. Yeah, and my 15 year old likes him too. So there you go. Oh, yeah. Well, that's yeah, he's, wild. He's Rick's on her playlist. And not because of us, because she didn't want nothing to do with our music. She found right. our music on her own, you know? So. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I'm going to look. I'm going to show him. He looks. Uh, I guess he looks better than I expected. <laughs> he's, he's been, yeah. He used to be on General Hospital too as an actor. Oh boy, yeah, yeah that's him. That's yeah, he looks like now. Yep, that's Felix now. Yep, seventy something, and whatever doctor he has has done a good job. And I know you good. see this. <laughs> yeah, that's but the, 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 it's tasteful, you know. It's not like Joan not Rivers, right? Yeah. Or oh, what's that other guy? What's that guy? Oh, the guy. I don't know. He was in. He's in a bunch of some Rick Mickey Rooney. Mickey oh, Rooney. Oh yeah, that's that guy. Yeah. He was jacked. Up. <laughs> yeah. Dano's here. Hey, Dano. hey Dano. Yeah, that that guy was he was a mess. I couldn't even believe that guy. <laughs> I would never. I mean, I don't know. Unless something happened to me, because I know a guy who was like in a bad accident and his face got like his the bones got shattered. But right. unless that happened, I don't think I would do facial plastic surgery. That's just that's wild. Because you you just look so different. I had yep. surgery on my jaw and they had to like uh, file some of it. And uh, yeah, even I still feel my face looks different. So, oh, it's Mickey Rourke. I said the wrong guy. <laughs> Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke is a short guy. That's right. A short actor. Mickey Rourke. I don't know how tall anybody is until he I was, see uh, them. In, he was in Iron Man. He was in The Wrestler. He was in Nine and a Half Weeks back when he was sexy and younger. He mm -hmm. was in Holly Davidson, The Marlboro Man. Yeah. I mean, I don't know anything about his career. I just seen some of his movies. Yeah, I've seen uh, Mickey Rourke um, and some yeah. stuff, but his face is jacked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Twig! Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Okay, so I know you're in Texas now. Yep. Are yep. you originally from there? No, I am not. No. Where are you from? I was born in Fort Benning, Georgia. My dad was in the military. Okay. So we moved around a little bit. Lived overseas for a little bit. Um, my older brothers caught more of the travel because they were older. Mm -hmm. uh, before Texas, I was in South Dakota. My mom's family, my mom's family is from South Dakota. My dad's family uh, is from Louisiana. They met oh. in France. 
That's crazy. Yeah. Military, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and so when I was twelve, we came to Texas. Oh, I've so been, you've been there for a while. Pretty much, yeah. I left the military, came back, and I bought my mom and dad's house. So pretty much, I'm in the same spot I grew up in, basically. That's cool. Yeah. So your mom's from, or was your dad That's from cool. Louisiana? My dad, Louisiana, yeah. So like, are they from the swamps, like the bayou? Not the bayou, but a little small. <laughs> they've shot me and used to shoot me alligators. That's yeah. That's why I'm I was backwards. I'm not all the way backwards, but part way backwards, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like the accent. I can't always understand them, but yeah. I think it's a cool accent. The French yeah. Creole, I think they call it, yeah. Yeah, Creole, yeah. But it's, yeah, it's not just that. that. Yeah, my it's dad like didn't this have yeah. really strong situation, and you're like, what? Right. <laughs> so your parents, were they both in the military? Well, back when my mom was in France, they women couldn't serve technically. Ooh. So she was what they call a whack. Women's Auxiliary Corps. Oh. They did like office work and nurses. And right. My mom was an office worker, a, a clerk or yeah. secretary to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, though. She still got to travel yeah. and then didn't yeah. have to worry about like all the, the yeah. rigors of the military. Yeah. <clears throat> so your parents were in the military. Mm -hmm. um, I think you were, too, right? Four of the five of us were in the military. Yeah. All right. What branch? Uh, Army, Marines, Skipper Brother. Army, army. <laughs> Are you an army brother? I'm an army. Yeah. Okay. How long were you in? Uh, that's a that's a, a odd topic. I went back in 1987 when they were doing um, military cutbacks, mm -hmm. and so I signed waivers through athletic uh, injuries, so I couldn't uh, become disabled through the military later for my injuries going in, and then found out that I had something else, and so they actually sent me home during basic training in my MIT. So mm -hmm. I became medically unfit to serve. So I went, mm -hmm. I was in 16 weeks, but I went, I tried, and that changed the course of my destiny. And which, I, if I would have come back home, I would have met my wife. So there you go. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. So I thought, because I, I have heard you talking about different kinds of training you have, yeah. I thought that you got it from the military. So no. first question is. <laughs> Are you a ninja? <laughs> um, I love Odie, but no. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, I have friends that are third to tenth degree black belts in ninjutsu, oh. which would be ninja style training, right? Right. And I've trained with those guys, and I, I've trained other stuff. Yeah. Well, what's the other stuff that you've trained in? Um, so I've trained in. Oh, goodness. What do you call it? I've trained in like, oh, I'm trying to make sure I say it proper for the, the people listening. Um, <laughs> combatives is a good word. Combatives. Okay. Like uh, when you fight and your life is on the line, you don't need a thousand moves. Right. You need what works quick and done into the, to the basics. So there's no belts in that. It's just being visceral mm -hmm. and survival only. Um, I've trained in wrestling from a young age i was a regional and all district wrestler as a young kid oh cool yeah and then um i've done combat submission wrestling which is like catch wrestling which is a real form of art that happens nowadays mm -hmm. i've done brazilian jiu-jitsu oh that's I've pretty done, cool i've done some other things uh and when you ask my favorite superhero between batman and superman i'll tell you more okay. <laughs> remind me and i'll tell you more because that was part of my training too. But yeah, I've, I've trained a lot of things. I've uh, fortunate, um, like a lot of folks know who Bruce Lee was. And mm -hmm. one of his one of his friends slash teachers taught him was Dan Inesanto, who brought in the weaponry to Bruce Lee. I've been able to train with the guys he's trained. I've actually had seminars where I was training with him. So I have friends that have 19 or 20 black belts who are in the Hall of Fame. So That's I've cool. been able to pigeon pigeonhole my training or or if you play video games which i don't uh i can hack my training kind of like those cheat codes yeah, so yeah. Able, as being a blue chip athlete my whole life i was able to able to be in circumstances where i wouldn't wouldn't um quote technically qualified to be in mm -hmm. but because i was able to be with the right people i could do cheat codes and learn and that's how i constructed what i taught which was basically the shirt i'm wearing i can't see my shirt 
there's a logo on my shirt someplace. Oh, yeah, what, it says B3, <laughs> yeah, but so I've That's taught, cool. it's been fun, yeah. So are you like a fast learner? Yeah, yeah. I have a very, all the guys I train with who have way more superiority in training, mm -hmm. they're amazed that within minutes they have to like go full strength to keep me off them. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So that means you're like strong. Well, I understand motion and mobility and fluidity of the body. Mm -hmm. I can't dance a lick, but for rest, <laughs> but for wrestling, yeah, and, and fighting in close, I understand motion and movement and you know mm -hmm. deflection and like judo and that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's it's all fun. I mean, I'm not saying I'm a tough guy, but I just know some stuff. Well, that's good. I know you said that you could teach people some. Um, What's the word like self defense and stuff like yep. some quick moves? Yep. Like is that something yep. that you were studying too? That's why I taught. Yeah, when I went to Spain, mm -hmm. I became one of like ten guys I think in the U.S. that became certified as as an urban weapon instructor from a uh, from a system. Yeah. Nice. So, so how long did you do that? What well, used to own I used to own my own hair salon, I used to pastor a church, and have a martial arts academy at the same time. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So how long was the martial arts academy you were Ooh, teaching? Nine, how long was that? About 10 years, probably. That's a long time. Yeah. And you said, so I used to have other black belt instructors come in and like try to challenge me and stuff. And, you know, mm -hmm. I was never worried about it because even when I was a young youngster with my, with my training, I had friends that were junior Olympians and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we'd, we'd, we'd wrestle or fight for fun. And point fighting is not, Fighting, fighting. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, no, of course not. No. Right. <laughs> There's no so, points in a real fight. <laughs> the only point is, are you going to be carried by six or judged by 12? Oh, boy. Well, you're a mama bear. You know what I'm talking about. Seriously. I mean, that's when you have to defend yourself to that level, yeah. you have to defend yourself. And I'm not a tough guy. I just, uh, I just like, I, I grew up fighting. I had four brothers when we were a small yeah. town. You know, <laughs> we'd, we'd wrestle and fight for fun, you know? so Yeah, I did too. Yeah, so I think the difference, like like a lot of times you watch maybe martial arts on on YouTube, and, I, and Odie will, will attest to this. You get like a 12-year-old who gets his black belt, and the, the adult goes to grab the kid's hand, and the kid throws the adult over and flips. Yeah, it's ridiculous. That's not real life. That's, that's I not know. Gonna, I hate you know, that. So, you know, so the way I always taught and trained was there's no belts. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a cutesy thing, but like, there's a no certificate thing. is better at the end, you know, yeah. just be like, yeah. I completed this class or whatever. Yeah. But um, I had, we had uh, my son in martial arts and it was uh, like, it seemed like it was going to be great for like self-defense. But then we realized it's just like a scheme for money. Every month, was it, get was another it, belt. Was it taekwondo, wasn't it? No, it was karate, MMA. Karate. Something yeah. else. Yeah, I say karate. I was saying karate for I know. Uh, Odie, Odie. Odie. <laughs> yeah. There's so many places we just call it take my dough, take your money. Because like yeah. we all know who Mike Tyson was or is as a fighter, right? Yeah. Okay. What what black belt did he have? None. Oh, he yeah, that's world, what I, he I tried. He had world championships. He yeah. did the same, the same six or seven punch combinations, the same footwork, the same jump rope, the same speed bag, the same heavy bag. But you can't sell it to parents to have a belt test every month. Yeah. Yeah. That to me was dumb. I was like, you have to, it's time for a new belt. It's time for a new test. I get a stripe. Time right? to pay. You get a stripe on the belt, three stripes on the belt. That's after you get all the belts that you paid for every dog one month. I was like, what is going on? Why do we always have to go to this crap? Like I got stuff to do. <laughs> yeah. I get it. Yeah, it was pretty annoying, and um, it wasn't really the best. Like, my kid was, like, having fun out there because he liked to fight and stuff like that. But I I used to, like, play fight with my uncles because they're, like, my uncles, well, two of them are younger than Dano is. So, <laughs> right. so they were, like, my big brothers. Like, they were, like, you know, eight and nine when I was born. So when I got bigger, I was big enough to, like, play fight and wrestle with them. Right. They could never pin me because I was, like, skinny and squirmy. Yep. But they were like, no, you're cheating. I was like, I don't, you're What's way bigger than me. Of course I have to cheat. It's not even a cheat. I'm just better, you know? But I couldn't pin them either because they were huge. But I was right. like big yeah. tomboy. Yeah, I just, uh, if you take a person who's fought most of their life 
and you teach them certain things, then they're really skilled. You should yeah. take, take a person who really can't fight or is not aggressive, teach them a thousand things, they really can't fight, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think it's definitely a mentality. So I, I was talking to my friend and he he's into all this training. He's always talking about these scenarios, yeah. whether they're real or not. But a lot of times he'll, he'll just like make up a scenario. And I'm like, I don't think so, man. If this girl, she's so trained and like some guy walks up on her, you know, chances are she's not going to be able to like overpower him. She might be able to do some things depending on her frame of mind at the time. But most of the time you get attacked or whatever happens, you're not just expecting it. You're just like, you know, doing whatever. People attack you and they sneak. And yep. just because you train doesn't mean, you know, you're going to have the upper hand. Like there's real life situations that are right. like, <laughs> it's Almost not on the mat. <laughs> oh, it's okay. She sat next to me. I, I was turning to the Get the, my the laptop real slow. Yeah. I got that death stare, so we'll come back with this one. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Peanut Butter. <laughs> but um, yeah. So, oh, speaking of your wife, how yeah. did she feel about your peanut butter channel? Uh, she thought it was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> she tolerated it. She thought it was stupid. Yeah. That's good. As long as she tolerated it, though, because she could have been like, you know, flipping out about it and stuff like that. Well, but I do eat peanut butter on, on odd stuff as a real person. Okay, um, okay. I mean, so you didn't just make in it In my daily life, like, you know, um, I've known to put peanut butter on pizza and eat it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I just like the contrast. So that goes way back in my, in, my, in my childhood, and it goes back into some cooking channels and some other stuff too, but yeah. <laughs> Speaking so. of pizza, Daniel Prado is reminding us that it's, Pizza Bitcoin or Bitcoin Pizza Day. Happy Bitcoin Pizza Day, everybody. Woohoo. Yeah, Go yeah. get a pizza. That's, that's the guy they the guy about the pizza, right? Yeah. Oh, he yeah. loves pizza either way. So I was like thinking about cooking whatever I was gonna make earlier. And I was making a dog's food. And yeah. he was like, by the way, we should have pizza well, tonight. We we prepped we prepped all through this morning this afternoon for tonight's dinner. We're mm -hmm. making bon me bowls. What are those? Um it's uh, Vietnamese food, and um, you have to like pickle. What, Lori? It's usually a sandwich, but we oh, okay. uh, get a picture here. I'll show you a picture. Yeah, we prepped this for tonight. Oh, that looks great! I we like that. Together. Yeah, that's nice. Dano and I do not cook together. We are gonna have like a macaroni and cheese um, off one day, so we're gonna do a blind taste test. We're gonna make people taste both ones and see which one is better clearly mine's gonna be better but that's you know where is it right that's how you spell yeah. it bond me rice bowl okay yeah yeah that looks good look, look you can't see any rice in that bowl though can you no it's probably underneath everything <laughs> that's how they roll. Yeah. yeah yeah my wife and i when we first started cooking we thought we, we had when our oldest kids were younger we went to a place called central market which is like a fancy store off of heb we bought mm -hmm. all this expensive, expensive cheese, like $35 of <laughs> the cheese. Yeah. Made mac and cheese. That's it. It's like, just get craft. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it, was, it just, it didn't come out well for us, but we, we always try, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You I have smoke to... in the room, but we cook together in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. You got to mix it up though. When you make macaroni and cheese, I think, I think like the basic cheddar is okay but i think like the best is like some sharp some mild cheddar and then you can throw some gouda in there or good is good yeah 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 anything else i feel like it's a little crazy a little monterey but don't get wild you think colby's <laughs> actually okay in there you think the maybe string, but it's pretty the mild string, yeah with the string yeah. is good, right maybe I'm yeah right. yeah i like, like to like mix it and i make yeah. a i put it in like uh in the pan and i i make it into a sauce like okay, okay. yeah that with the actual good. cheese and the the i think ours i just had like, the cream ours, yeah ours wasn't cream ours is like gummy and cookie and oh you, you gotta more? you gotta mix it you know when the snow first lands on your on your property it's nice once yeah. you drive on it and they plow it and they drive on it it's disgusting <laughs> that i hate that that was my mac and cheese <laughs> oh no no we've had macaroni and cheese like that before okay it's like it's always the thing like you gotta ask like hey 
when you get to like a barbecue or something right. or something there's two reasons for that one you want to know whether or not it's good two you want to know if it's nasty if the person next to you is the one who made it exactly right yep. yeah that's a hack for you guys out there okay <laughs> when, we, when, when we first got married like first year we were i mean we were poor i mean i'm talking poor and i was off work early my wife laurie laurie was working and uh, I thought it'd be sweet. I'll make macaroni and cheese. That's all we had in our cabinet with that pour. Oh, and like the powder? I, like mac and, like, like, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, craft, like, the box, right? The box, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this says add salt, right? A teaspoon, right? Oh, no. I did a tablespoon. Oh, my gosh. I and can't even tried, imagine. And, tried, and I tried and tried. and we. You can't get the salt out once it's no, in you there. Can't. No. <laughs> but, but we've been cooking since then, but we've gotten really good at now you know oh so the reason why your wife cooks with you is because she knows you're out of control <laughs> no i'm out of control but we love to cook together yeah, that's nice said, oh, wait, what she said go ahead you said this is the teaspoon right said, yeah the tablespoon. yeah and then today we're cooking getting the stuff ready like teaspoon tablespoon i get it mixed See? up you still that's why so she loves you but she also wants to eat and she can't just leave you in there by yourself no. and I, and also <laughs> I, I touch all the nasty stuff and cut it what? All, the, all the raw meat and stuff that's disgusting that she hates to touch. I do all that. Well, I have to do it because Dan knows a little right? different than me. Yeah, I'll let him cut the dog's meat though, because the dog eats raw. <laughs> yeah, so I don't care how his meat looks if it's all cut comes up, out. It's all good, yeah. Yeah, the dog doesn't care. I mean, I shouldn't lie. He really is a pretty picky dog. I have created a monster, but if like if I'm making food, like I like my food to be pretty. Even though I can't even eat it, like <laughs> right, look pretty, look good. Presentation, yeah. yeah, yeah. Even before, like I put a garnish or whatever it is, it's gotta look like you ordered it from a restaurant. <laughs> that's I've our biggest. Like that. That's our biggest disappointment. Now, that we cook a lot, it's hard to go to a restaurant that cannot cook us. Well, then you know you gotta find before a place you, that's just really service. good. The service, yep. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, that's I go for the ambiance yep. and for the service because no pots and pans can. and prep pans and saucepans and and all the yeah. cups and all the spoons and forks because I'm guessing with boys I don't know I, I have a yeah. daughter and I'm lucky if her fork makes in the dishwasher you know no it's it's uh it's a fifty fifty unless I harass but it doesn't matter because I still have to turn it on and all of that. And I don't really like the boys doing the dishes because either they don't they get did, clean they enough. Wrong. They did it wrong. Yeah. Or I don't want any dropping. Like, yeah. So she, I like to keep my that's sets full. Says, that's what she says. That does it wrong. Yeah. it's But it's true. Like you find fingerprints yeah. or whatever. So I'm like, just put it in the dishwasher. That's it. Keep it safe. Yeah. Let's go back well, over to the comments. Let's see if okay, somebody. Sorry. No, it's all right. We're talking. Going back and forth. Vulcan Maniac is here, says, let's Vulcan go. Um, Dano's laughing at me because I, I said I did too. I guess because I used to like fight a lot when I was younger. <laughs> he knows that though. Fowler's here. What's up, Fowler? Thanks Fowler. for coming. And then Robert Doucette says, Mrs. Worldwide, always looking good and at the top of your game. Love your vibe and positivity. Well, thanks. Definitely not at the top of my game, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Jamrock just bought pizza for three dollars per slice. That's point zero 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 one one Bitcoin. Nice. Yeah, but we got spend, a whole pie. Did you spend Bitcoin? Bitcoin on it? No. Oh, I left my hair curly for you. You see it? I know uh, you were asking. Yeah, I kind of see it. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Uh, it got a little wild, but um, you know, it's not bad. It got um, it just doesn't curl the way I want it to. But in Costa Rica, it did. Yep. So that was weird. But I know you're like into the hair and stuff. So I was never a stylist or anything. And we'll get into this in a minute because you are, you, you know, you've been for a while. But I used to straighten people's hair. So I would look at people's roots and then look at the ends to see if they had like a chemical straightener or, yep. or whatever. Mm -hmm. So when, when you, I think you asked or you said something about um, Fowler's hair. And I was yeah. like, I told Dano a while ago, I was like, he has hair like David, like my younger son. And it was just so funny because like, and then they had the same sort of haircut, like, I don't know, like a month ago. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's crazy. But Fowler's hair, today it was like more curly. 
but usually it looks like he like fluffs it up, you yeah, know, like, him, yeah. yeah, if he picks it or uses his hands, or whatever. But you know, my son does that too. Like that's just how they are. But I could see it. And then when you said something, I was like, see, I told you <laughs> yeah. to Dano. But yeah, let's talk about your salon. How did you get into hair and whatnot? Cause that's not, I mean, guys aren't usually into that, but I do know, you know, sometimes they are. No, I, I, I kind of fell into it by accident, basically. I was a uh, pizza manager for pizza places. More pizza, okay. <laughs> well, I'm just, I mean, I used to, I just, I used to like be an assistant, a driver at one point for a Domino's. Became an assistant manager. They would never promote me, promote me to be a manager because I kept training all my managers. So I was better as they wanted me to train the guys who ran the place. Mm -hmm. And I ended up leaving them at one point, and then I ended up at Papa John's. And worked there for a long time, and uh, I was working too many hours and didn't see my wife and kids. So mm. I quit and was in, and fired in the same conversation. Oh. <laughs> it depends on who said it first, right? Like, I'm out. No, you're out. No, I'm out. No, you're out. Here's your keys. No, give me the keys. Kind of conversation. <laughs> and I had a wife and two kids, and I had I had bills to pay. So yeah, I went to a friend of mine who was in a competitor's place and started driving for that company, doing pizzas, doing papers at night and cleaning the church during the daytime to pay mm -hmm. bills. Wasn't college educated. Um, uh, the assistant manager of this place was, he was there for a long time and he wasn't college educated. All his dad, his whole family are super educated. He was <laughs> in the food business. And this place was attached to the corporate um, um, headquarters of that brand. Every time they came from behind the store into the store, like, all right, Terry, when you want your own store, you killed you killed us as a competitor, join us as a as a teammate. I was like, Oh, either I go back into fast food or I find a new path. And this guy named Kevin went and joined a hair school and was loving it. And I, I fought it and fought it. And he goes, Just do it, I can do it, you can do it, kind of thing. And I went yeah. to Laurie and I went to the hair school. My wife's name is Laurie. And um, we toured the school and I joined the same day. Nice. Did you both go to the school or just you? We visited, but only I joined. Right, 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 right. Okay. I have yeah, this she, friend. She hates her. She touches. It's disgusting to her. Her own hair? <laughs> no, only hers. Okay. She's no, yeah, hair can be definitely hair. gross. Yeah. yeah. It's her. Yeah. 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 No, I totally get that. Especially if, like, hair's in the bathroom or, like, the bathtub. It's so gross. I totally get that. Like, my younger son's, <laughs> my younger son. He used to be like so grossed out if there was hair in the bathtub. I was like, oh my gosh, just like, you know, calm down. But it is what it is. I get it. But do, I can do other people's hair, but like only after they wash it. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like when when I I just did my daughter's hair, the green hair I showed you behind the stage. Yeah, right? that came out so well. I also cut my wife's hair that day and I I didn't know I was cutting it or would have extra cleaned my brushes, extra, extra clean because mm -hmm. Because, like, you can't get all the hair out when it's like, what I do for a living. You can't get it all out. But she's like, which one's clean? Is it? Is it, is it <laughs> I mean, but that's, but she really has a, really does have a grossness for that, though. So yeah, yeah. Really no, I get it. I do. Um, so, what kind of things do you do? You do everything? Um, I cut, I cut in color. I don't wax. If you oh, come no, in, no, no. in the old days, you come in one big giant eyebrow. I said, I give you two giant eyebrows. Oh my I don't God. want to wax. I don't want to yeah. wax. Um, I I can do facials. I can do like all that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. I've given my wife a full set of nails before. I mean, I don't do it anymore. I just like oh. anything to do with my business. I can do perms. I can do straighteners. I can do relaxers. Yeah. Because like depending on who you're talking to, a perm for you may not be a perm for me, but a straightener right. for me, I mean, you know what I'm saying it's all different. Yeah, so I I know what they mean. Like they're both. It's like basically the same chemical. It's just no rollers, the right. permanence, and then the right. relaxer. Yeah, but I make, yeah, I make cool. a living cutting and coloring. You know, that's all good. That's like when you know. straighten hair, do you use a press or do you use a flat iron? I like just use iron? A, yeah, I don't. Um, no, no, no. I, when I was younger, I did use uh, an actual iron on my hair. In the oven, like oh no, on the iron board. But I meant when you yeah. did it, when you when you press hair straight, did you have the hot tools that go in the oven? Or my mom fire. did. Yeah, that, when I was that, little. That's mad respect. I can't do that. Well, yeah, it was pretty dangerous because I definitely exactly. had some burnt out hair and it stunk. It's it white. 
Yeah, I had a couple of ear burns, but the she like actually like burned out a chunk of hair and it yeah. smelled so bad. It turned white, shriveled up, yuck. Yep. But that's when I started doing my own and I I got this mom. Yeah, yeah. I did it with an iron, then I did it with a curl and iron because my hair just it gets straight easily. But I just use the flat iron now. Like I don't right. there's so many good I don't ones. use the blow dryer or anything like nice. that. Nice. Air dry it, then press it straight with the flat iron. Yeah, but it takes forever to dry. It takes it takes right. a long time to dry. A day and a half two days. Huh? A day and a half? Yeah. Sometimes sometimes even the next day it's still a little wet. So I'll put that like that dry attachment thing on just to like get inside there. But like you ever try using those things that the those uh, divers use? Those body squeegee things they use and they get done diving, they wipe off, they're like that little squeegee for the body. No. You press it on your hair and it takes more moisture out. Just saying. That sounds interesting. If you're in a rush, but don't rub it. No. It'll make it frizzy. all get out. Yeah, no, I know. I don't. I don't rub it. Well, yeah. we have some uh, G Master Five Thousand One. That's my friend. Bald life. Bald life. Yeah, he's been bald for a while. Uh, Will C says, "Never fear." <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you say that you ran a church or started a church? Yeah, I started a church once in my life. Yeah. What kind of church? It was just a. Uh, offshoot of a big church and i just kind of just taught scripture taught the bible yeah but like what was it catholic protestant no, no it just what was the way it was off of a baptist church okay but I, I just but i wouldn't i hate the word baptist nowadays because it's got a bad name you know yeah i hear you but i just taught scripture you know mm -hmm. judeo-christian values how about that yeah, yeah, that's that's actually very specific. People don't know about that, but yeah. Okay. For you, that makes sense because you teach in a church, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how long were you in that? Were you considered a pastor or? I was the founding pastor of the church, yeah. Nice. How long was that, that you had that church? She's, my wife's thinking for me. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> that's for, teamwork. I like for, it. For a long time, yeah. Yeah, and you had the kids in there too? Seven years, pardon me? Yeah, I said seven years. You you had the kids in there too? Yeah, kids, everything, yeah. Nice. That That's a lot of work, though, I have to say. Did I, leave, you... I leave work and then show up at church and preach and then write sermons. It was back during MySpace how long ago it was. Yeah, that's MySpace. Was. What was MySpace, like 20 years ago? 18-ish <laughs> years that's, ago? She's looking it up. She's looking at yeah. uh, <laughs> so, so we just called we gave, we gave our church a name called Sanctuary. Mm -hmm. That's because we, we worship in the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And then we just called it a church in Fort Worth. We did it, we did it just a church. And then my, my 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 uh my church that sponsored me because the crowd I drew wanted mm -hmm. me to have an egg line, a church that beaten the screwed and the tattooed. Oh, <laughs> you know, people come to church and they would like, you know, smash their crack pipes on the stage, and you know they they oh, they'd, wow. find, they'd, they'd find freedom in the church kind of thing. We yeah. never passed an offering plate in our church. We had a box in the back, put the money in the back, you know. And so we had we had the freedom to minister instantly. We 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 cooked once a week or twice a week for anybody who showed up. Nice. We, uh, Food pantry. We had a clothing pantry. You know, I had people take swings at me in the parking lot because they showed up the wrong day and stuff. I'm like, dude, just because you're here, don't forget who I am. You yeah, know, <laughs> that's the last time you ever swing. But I mean, <laughs> because I dealt with a lot of street people, you know, who thought they were deserving. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we had a lot of fun and a lot of a lot of suffering and along the way. But yeah. Yeah, that's life. You gotta I tell just, people, try Jesus, not me. Then you shut them down. <laughs> yeah. just, my, I just did my one of my high school friend's funeral last last week, two two weeks ago. Oh, I just I'm asked sorry. the pastor for that, you know. So I did all that stuff for that funeral, you know. So yeah, it's not. So I'm are a better you an ordained minister. Yes, I am. Yeah. Nice. I'm a better teacher than a minister because I don't have a lot. Of, I don't have a lot of time for stupid. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, like you keep doing the same thing over and over and over. And yeah. Like, you know, I just like, look, you got to make a decision. Grow up or don't or, and change or don't change. And yeah. it sucks to be a grown up. And and so <laughs> I wasn't, you know, 
I just said, I, yeah. So, and I haven't grown up all the way either. So it's kind of hard when my maturity level didn't, whatever. We had a, <laughs> it didn't I, match I, what you were teaching. <laughs> I, I, well, I had a guy like we, when I used to teach from the pulpit or from the stage, um, I would allow folks in the audience to ask questions because I believe that's kind of how Jesus thought. I'm going to talk about church, but I believe that Jesus talked to people mm -hmm. and he lectured the religious people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so when I taught, I allowed people to ask questions. And there was a guy who came in who kept just like going off tangent. I'm like, look, dude, we're done with this. We'll talk afterwards. All I can show you the door and I'll help you out. You know, right? We're in a rough neighborhood kind of thing, you know. Yeah. And we we this sounds weird, but even in our church, we had our our music minister carried a gun. You know what I'm saying? Well, if that's how it is, that's how it's got to be. You know? a rough neighborhood, just because you know. Anyways, so. <laughs> I can't believe this. So we had Pastor Terry. Is that what they called you? They did. Yeah. Pastor Terry it wasn't Pastor Peanut Butter then, huh? No. no. <laughs> But still my favorite food, though, peanut butter. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So um, I still, yeah, that's wild. That is extremely interesting that you were past it. And you still are, technically. Technically, I am, yeah. Yeah, so you're still past it. You've been calling, they, they've called Dano um, because he preaches <laughs> sometimes. They call him Pastor Prado. And I think that's so funny that like, you really are a pastor. That's very interesting. And, um, and it, it takes a lot of strength to do that because you have to, like, you have to put your family, like, put them on the back burner so you can serve other people. Well, I didn't. I refused to do that. No, I refused that. Well, that's good because I was going to ask you about that. Like, how was it with your wife and kids? So, like, I'll tell. So I'll tell you a really crazy story. The, the church that ordained me, right? Because like, you have to be ordained by by an organization, right? Right, right, right. So the church or <laughs> why are you shaking your head over here? So I went, <laughs> I went to a very Baptist church for a long time. But I went mm -hmm. to another very Baptist church and they have things that they call revivals. So they bring in the guest speaker to yeah. rev revive the people kind of thing, which you might yeah. know. The, okay. And this guy was a, was a minister. He's a rev revivalist mm -hmm. and he, he uh, hated everything about the young Christians in the world today. You know, it was a long time ago, the longer hair, the earring. Yeah. And he was promoting like all his stuff outside the church. He did like he was a voice teacher, and he, his at the revival he was doing this stuff. Yeah, come and see us at the, at the Texas State Fair, which is the biggest fair in Texas. Oh. But then, but then I always sat like the second row, a third row from the front, on the left hand side in the auditorium, which is the right hand of the minister. Does that kind of mm -hmm. make sense? So yeah. we're on stage, look down, I'm right there. Mm -hmm. I always support the minister. And this guy was going on and on and talking crazy stuff. <laughs> wife, wife, wife leans over and goes, is that right? I said, no, he's wrong. You're correct, babe. It's wrong. Yeah, and, I've been there. <laughs> and he goes, you young man, sit to me quiet. God's trying to teach you something. He said that and to he, you? He just said that. I stood up and we had a conversation. Oh, got God. my wife, got my kid out of the, out of the sanctuary, and I left. Yeah. And then a week later, the, the, the old folks, the deacons of the church came to my house and say, Terry, you need to come back to church and apologize. Yeah. Like, I'll come back and apologize that you guys are spineless, weak men who let some guys spew, spew evil and vile. Because he was saying, like, if you're a Christian, you should never wear an earring for your man, and I'll prove it to you. And I'm not trying to make it about, if you guys are getting bored, I apologize. I'm not trying to make it about. This, but, is, this is life. It's fine. Okay. So when Moses was on the, on the mount getting the tablets from God, Aaron was in charge of the people. And Aaron yeah. said, give me your gold. Take out your earrings and your necklaces, and he made the golden calf, right? Yeah, that was a big thing back then. Like, you yeah. know, wearing right. jewelry and stuff. Right. But he took it out to make that false idol, right? Mm -hmm. That's the scripture he used to say no Christian should ever wear earrings ever. We had an issue with that. We're not making golden calves, guy. Calm right. down. So, but, that's, <laughs> but they still ordained me, and that's the place that didn't take it back. But, you know. That's good. Now we got Pastor Terry. He's uh, gracing our presence today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Terry. That's cool. I'm no, but I, I mean, you know, listen, I like regular names. I also like a title every every now and then, throw it in there. You know, like in real life, nobody calls me Mrs. Anything. They just call me Leona. So, like, that's it. But, you if know, like you, on here. If I meet you, I'll probably call Mrs. Worldwide if I meet you. I'm fine with that, you know, because sometimes you, if you see it on there, it'll say Leona. 
right, sometimes right. it says Mrs. Worldwide. It just depend, depends on how I feel. But it's it's just something that I made for the crypto world. Right. So, yeah. Let me see. We got Jorge Calderon says, keep going, man. He likes your, he likes your content. So don't worry about it. I think um, like a lot of people, they do believe in some sort of higher power. And I would say that the majority of the world believes in God. Right. Whether they subscribe to a religion is is a whole nother story. Whole nother right. story. Right. But right. yeah, people are they're fine listening to certain things, especially if it's like personal experiences. You're not out here like you know telling everybody they're going to AGL or anything. So I'm not going to rock to anybody. No way. <laughs> yeah. No. I know. Never. I I have like because I personally am very strict about a lot of things. I don't curse. I never did any right. drugs. Never smoked anything. But I also don't watch anything that's over PG-13. Like, and some PG-13 stuff on Netflix, I'll be like, Dano, what, what is this rated? <laughs> I'm like, all right, that's it. You know, that, but that's me. That doesn't mean that everybody's bad if they do that. I don't, you know, I don't think You're that. You're careful what you let, let in your head. I get it. Yeah, I just like to keep keep the body keep guarded, clean. Keep guarded. Yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, if I, I don't feel like it's the best thing to be saying or whatever. I don't like to listen to that stuff. Like, you know, even music and stuff like that. No kind of graphic stuff. That's just not how I roll. So it's it's right. a little much for some people, but it is what it is. We got Brian P. Houston, Texas checking in. There's a few of you guys that are from Houston, Houston area. Houstonians from Houston. Yeah, yeah you and... Um, I'm from Fort Worth. Oh, darn it. Well, it's Texas. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's Houston's a big state. Huge too. It's a big state. But, yeah, but Houston itself is huge. We were yes. in Houston like two years ago, and we were, I want to say, by like Cyprus or something. And yeah. then we went to some other part, and it was like two hours away. I was like, we're still in Houston? What the heck? It was crazy. About six hours from here, I think, from where I'm at. That's wild. So and I've I, traveled there several times and taught hair classes and stuff, yeah. Oh, so yeah, you still do. You still Four hours and 16 minutes. I'm sorry. She looked it up. No, it's okay. It's fine. Um, I like stats. So do you still teach hair stuff? I, the COVID kind of canceled all that, you know? Mm -hmm. so, um, I don't travel and teach anymore, but I have traveled uh, for nine years. And yeah. I've met some of the biggest names in the world doing hair. Been on stage with those guys. Been in their houses. Yeah. yeah. So. so like what, what guys have you... You Let's know. just say that Brian Legend is poor compared to the guys I had spent time with. All right. You don't want to name any names? <laughs> um, well, you don't, I don't think you'll know them, but um, the biggest guy I did hair with or for was um, Jim Markham. He no. used to own Pureology. No, see, I mean, it's just, he's a billionaire. Right. He's old. So Jim, <laughs> Jim Markham, right. It's just hard because if you don't know my... It's, if you don't know the people, it's kind of weird. Um, yeah, but so there's Jim different Martin, people watching, not just me. But you know a guy named Charles Manson, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so unfortunately, he, yeah. No. So it's, well, I mean, through through folk, folklore and and Helter Skelter. Um, so J. C. Bring was a hairdresser that was involved with the murders with uh, Sharon Tate. Oh you know goodness! Yeah. All right. So J. C. Bring was mentoring Jim Markham back in the day. And so then when Jay Sebring was no longer there, Jim Markham took over his company and all his, all his houses, all, all that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've had, I've been in his guy's house. I've shook his hand. I've been to his pool table. I mean, huh? but yeah, he's the richest cool. guy ever. Yeah, I've been with. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So like, did you ever do any of those crazy hair shows where you're like on stage or there's like cameras around you and there's like music and lights and you're just like shh, 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 cutting yep. off fast and everything? Yeah. Yep. Yep. You have yep. footage of that? Some places, one video that someone made this out there. Yeah. Yeah. I got you got to find it. Cause I think that kind of stuff is fun. Like I love the music. I love the like wildness of it all. I don't like when they, they put like crazy colors and stuff like that, yeah, but I just like not, fast yeah, pace. Since I, on stage, I was there doing curly hair. So it wasn't really crazy. But right, it was, right, right. It was, and then I did an updo. I did a full updo. I, I'm not even an updo specialist. What was yeah. crazy was the day after us was a company that their whole day was updos, and I did mine. And it's like all, all the crowd talked about for the last week, weekend was mine. And I hadn't done an updo like in six years before I got there. Yeah. <laughs> I made it up the night before just to just That's to do it. Yeah, 
Yeah. So. Oh, now I, I have another question piggybacking yeah. off of that. So yeah. who did your daughter's hair growing up at home? Was it you or your wife? That's crazy. Do you know that's like a like an it's been like a bit of a trend, guys doing their daughter's hair. Yeah, there's that guy on YouTube. He has a big, huge channel, mm -hmm. and he teaches he teaches dads how to do it the dad way versus the hair. <laughs> it works, you know, and it's a hack and it works. I've been I've done hair I've done hair for 25 years. Yeah, My oldest daughter's what 26, 20, 27. Oldest daughter's 27. You know, 26 year old and a 15 year old. Mm -hmm. So I've been their hairdresser since yeah, since way back when. That's so funny. It's cool, but it's funny because like. I think Dano could do it if we had a girl, but I would probably be just like not let him because <laughs> I probably would like be annoyed with like the uneven parts and stuff, you know, like I just I'm, right. I'm a stickler for that kind of stuff. But yeah. <laughs> Get it? yeah, that's crazy. So like, did the, did your daughters ever like want your wife to do their hair instead of you or they wanted you to do it? Mama can't do hair, she says. Did they know? Did the girls know? <laughs> you don't even do your own hair. No, my, no, that, um, always me. That's always crazy. Me. That's good though. It's good. All right, let's switch it up a little bit. Um, oh. What's your favorite snack with peanut butter? With peanut butter. Mm-hmm. A spoon. It can be fruit, whatever it is. A spoon. Oh, you just like it by itself? I like it on everything. I like it on apples. I like it on bread. I like it on crackers. Now, like we need something wild because you've put it on so many well, things. Mostly I just did on bread, but I've done it like you take out French, the French bread and you haul it out. Then I mm -hmm. fill it full of peanut butter and then put my mm -hmm. spaghetti in it and make a spaghetti peanut butter pocket. That's wild. <laughs> That's wild. I wasn't expecting that, but you I put know. It in my chili. I put it in my chili. Okay. Um, we're on vacation in a resort, and my daughter challenged me to put it in my eggs. So I put it in my eggs, all my hamburgers. You know, yeah, that's eggs. that's a little much right there. I could see. I mean, the 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 spaghetti in the bread pocket was was really yeah. wild. That was out of pocket, <laughs> no pun intended. On my garlic but bread, I, I, some, yeah, I put my garlic bread. Yeah. Oh yeah, you just you're just out of control. <laughs> I know. My wife hates it. My wife hates it. Yeah, but I like yeah. I like the I like the sweet the peanut butter with the sauce. That's that's it. The acid of the sauce, I like the combo. Mm -hmm. It probably food, like mellows it out a little it bit. It does. There's a five star restaurant right around our house that on their peanut butter, they put a dollop of peanut butter on it. I mean, yeah, on, on the burger. I mean, on their burger. I won't be going to that restaurant. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> what got me into trying all, all the crazy, crazy food was I watched the Food Network mm -hmm. and they developed peanut butter in the early days to be a geriatric food for the geriatrics in the home. They Interesting. Crust protein, so you just like, and eat peanut yeah. butter, right? And then at one cruel. point, yeah, it does, right? And then at <laughs> one point, Oscar Meyer <laughs> added bacon and they sold it peanut butter and bacon as a mixed spread. Mm, yeah, I don't. And know. then when jelly came out, but I watched that thing. I'm like, bacon and peanut—that's disgusting. <laughs> next time we had peanut butter, or we had, next time we had bacon. I saved a piece. And I tried it, and now well, if it goes good with that. Let's try it with this. But yeah, and I, it, it, it's just a thing. It, I don't have to have it. No, but my I, I got you. A spoon. My favorite way of peanut butter is a spoon. Take a spoonful, close the lid, and I'm good. I tried that with my dog. Like when we first first got him, he ate it. But then, like not long after that, he didn't like it. And I think. I think it was mostly because I'm allergic to it. So like I would flip out about it, but I'd like right. wear gloves and, you know, <laughs> just try to give it to him. Cause I thought, I thought that's what they liked, but, um, it's fun watching know. me. Though. I'll, give, I'll give, give him almond butter. Oh, he just doesn't like that stuff. He's a weirdo. He doesn't probably, think he's like a real dog. Process is probably not good for them anyhow. You know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't, I don't give it to my dogs or dogs. Yeah. So. I mean, I think it's okay, but you know, I skipped that, but, um, uh oh, let me click on this in a minute. So this G Master Five Thousand One said the best peanut butter is in a Reese's cup. I'm not gonna. I never had one. I, I I can slam down some Reese's peanut butter cups. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I've never had one, so I, I don't know. Like, oh. my wife, yeah. Yeah, I mean they look okay, but they smell like death to me. So. <laughs> and avoid it. When in doubt, don't. Yeah. Well, no, I know that they're gross. So, um, yeah. Let's uh, let's. Let's move on. You can't. 
Yeah, my wife says they're really gross. Save them for her, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Dano? <laughs> I think Dano just came in. Um, so when did you get into Seifu or was it Vulcan already when you got in there? Nope, day one. So you've been in Seifu the whole time? The first minute. Okay. I thought that you came in um, after a while. So were you like a silent watcher or? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I did. I'm still, yeah. I We got in on the pink cell, basically. That's what we got into. That's good. So what, what brought you to Seifu? Was it a video uh, or? No, no. I, we were researching. So my, my daughter's boyfriend, <laughs> um, I call my son-in-law, but they're not married yet. Um, oh, I'm sorry. He and I were doing some trades together, and he was looking at stuff. I was looking at things. He goes, "What do you think about this?" I'm like, "I don't know. We think about that." So we looked into it, and I, so I sent I sent him some cash off a project mm -hmm. that we were doing together, or he or maybe he'd transfer out of a project we had going already, and uh, we got in day one. When it got big enough, we took all of our initial out. That's all the sales we ever did, and so day one when Vulcan launches the blockchain. We are wallet at 412, I think, or 413, and it's 100% profit. I have no money in it. It's all profit. Nice. Nice. It's worth about 80 grand right now, day one. I can't believe you uh, trusted your daughter's boyfriend. That's they have a house together. They bought a house together. They're, they've been together six years, five years. They're, they're not going anywhere. Well, that's good though. Still, you know how a lot of uh, a lot of dads are. <laughs> it, no, and if he took it and ran with it, it just it just be money, you know. And, no, and it'd be got money. you. He'd never come back. You know what I'm saying? He but takes even like to trust, trust his judgment was that's pretty yeah. good. So you know, he brought it up. It. He brought it up. We looked at it together. We agreed together. Mm -hmm. And then he's really good with computers. Like when I sent you the message, I'll be on early because I don't know how to do this. My wife has to set this up for me. <laughs> So when, when there's things to buy, like day one, minute one, I send him the money, and he's good at computers. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you gotta, you gotta get it together. That's yeah. I, I just, I don't like computers. I just have a hard time with it. Oh, so anyway. No. But that's what that's the way of the world, my friend. You gotta, you should go to a class. That'll help. I know people I just, have done it. I just need sticky notes, and I can follow it. I need, so I have to learn it. I, to, I, I'm not that I can't comprehend it. No, I, I got forget you. the steps. So I need like a flow chart. But once yeah. I do enough, I'll be like all over it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just realized something. So we got, um, uh, well, Richard Hudman. Hey, Rich. And hey, then Rich. we got Suleiman Patel said sub Greek and put something in Greek. I just realized this. I think that they're streaming my video on Greek's channel too. That's why everybody was saying Greek stuff before. Do you want me to hold on a second? Bring that back up. Yeah. Oh, she can read Greek? No, oh. but we can take a picture of it. Oh, there she is trying not to be in the camera. <laughs> I'll look it up. What's that say? Oh, translate that? It's to him. Okay, it's just to him. So. I guess. Yeah, it's to Greek. Okay. <clears throat> um, so, how long were you in crypto, or have you been in crypto in general, like besides um, Seifu and Vulcan? Three years? Two years. I think three years, maybe two mm -hmm. years. Yeah, I think so. So that's not bad. You're still pretty new. So you got into Seifu not long after you got into crypto in general. So crypto, Seifu has been out what a year and a year and a few months, right? Mm -hmm. so about, a year, about a year and a half before that. Yeah, so I, that's good. I, I got into crypto before Crypto.com bought the naming rights to the Stable Center. I forget the dates. The last one. <laughs> yeah, I don't what? know what that was. <laughs> Summer or something. I don't do dates. I, uh, two, th two, th three years maybe. Yeah. No, that's good. I think that's good. I think you got into Seifu at a great time, and yeah. then you didn't have to go through so many things before. Did you get rugged at all? We had one project we get rugged on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But also made a ton of money on another one that allowed me to spread my money out and buy more. There you go. So, how many projects are you involved in currently? Or like invested in? Yeah. Um. You just ask that. I meant to look it up. Give me a second. I'll tell you exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'll pull it up for you. Let's see. Go here. No password. Oh, boy. Yeah, you got to get it together. <laughs> I do it on my phone. I do it on my phone. So, 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, wow. Eight, nine. Well, that's good. So you're making money with everything? Ten, ten counting um, Vulcan. Oh, yeah, you're all over the place. That's good. No, I'm not, uh, yeah. Well, not I'm, a bad way. Not no, a no. bad way. Right. I used to be in 27 when I first got into crypto. Mm -hmm. And then I was too diversified. So I. Yeah. By I, I would agree. That's like when you go to a diner and they have all kinds of food on the menu. Exactly. Like, whoa. <laughs> I want four choices. I want four choices. That's all I want. I mean, I want sometimes a little bit more than four, but We're not four of them pages. should be great. Right. Like, do you guys have, we live the, uh, what's that, Cheesecake Factory? Yes. Yeah, I love their food, but I hate their menu. It's like 20 <laughs> pages long. Well, I think you got. I lose, uh, I lose interest, and I'm like, I'm done. Yeah. Just buy me something. I'll eat it. I think you got to figure out what you like, and then Before stick with that can, when it comes yeah. to situations like that. Once in a while, you can branch out. I don't yeah. branch out because I have too many food allergies, so yeah. that's whatever. So I tend so, to um, buy. I tend to hmm? buy blockchains. I'm, I buy into blockchains right now. Every week, okay. I I have a certain amount of money each week. I put into it. Yeah. And I buy uh, certain blockchains. Mm -hmm. uh, one blockchain, I make 800 uh, more uh, dividends a week. I take half of those and buy another blockchain with it. So, okay, yeah. yeah, I love dividends. I really do, but yeah. I don't like to really research that much. So I only have one investment that I did by myself that has dividends, and I like it. But they split, so I was pretty annoyed. Right, at and you said, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was so mad. You, you watched I, the, the, Bowtie, the Bowtie Nation guy on YouTube? No. Look him up. If you do dividends, he is all about dividend trading. The Bowtie Nation. He's a really smart, retired military guy. I'm gonna write that down right now. Not it's just fine. It's not financial advice. It's just a good guy to look at. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm a big girl, so it's cool. So, I tried I, to get into forex um, a while ago, but I got kind of scammed. So right. I was like, eh, forget it. Plus. It's too much back and forth with it. So I was talking to Chris Cruzy, and he said that yeah. you could set up bots, and then you yep. just take out your profits. So I, I need to get into that. I uh, my biggest chunk of anything I put money into was Crypto.com. That's what I did. Was that I put, good? Like, put forty k into it, and I have over four hundred thousand coins or, or tokens. So every one percent changes. I I it's like a thousand dollars for me. Nice. So it's down. I wrote I wrote forty thousand to two hundred thousand. Yeah. We're back down to where it is now because I didn't have to take stock, uh, take profit. I oh, make okay. eight hundred of those coins a week, a week. Yeah. So when they, were, they go back to a dollar or two dollars or four dollars down the road, mm -hmm. by then I'm making a thousand coins a week or twelve hundred coins a week, and that's my that's my passive income on that one. But I have other projects that I'm doing the same thing with. That's good stuff. I I'm all about the passive income, but. That's right. I don't feel like doing the work and the research. I get it. I get it. <laughs> so I just let Dano do it. And then I try to do a little bit here and there. But I just figured um, a while ago when he was doing these videos and stuff, I was just like, well, I, you know, he's, he's all over the place. He's showing this and that and the other. So I'm just going to make a place for him to have his studio. And it's like, um, it's like a, like a closet, but it's kind of, that's it right there. Mm, it's part of the attic and a closet at the same time. And it's, and it's huge. Like, really walk in. It's really big. And yeah. there's a storm door there, so it's quieter. Because yeah. <laughs> when he was he was doing videos in the basement, you could hear his voice, like, booming through the whole house all the way to the second right. floor. And I'm like, what the heck? It's so The basement's where your gym is, though, right? That Jimmy bought? That's in the basement, Yeah. Right? yeah. But he started doing videos down there. And then he was doing videos in the car. He's doing videos outside. And I'm like, look, I just I set that up for him, and then he started doing it in that room, and it's a lot better. It's right, like it's right over there. But my room is like really big, and then I have like this area that I have is like a little room off of the bedroom, and then over there is like another room off of the bedroom. <laughs> so like a nursery or what? Like it could be a nursery if you. Oh, uh, like it could be an office or a nursery. Yeah, it's like a you know like there's like a doorway, but there's no yeah. doors. Okay, it's yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. But we were his... told me how. So this is our whole house. This is my... <laughs> no. So we we have a real small house, and I start I started uh, remodeling two thirds of it at the same time because it's all connected. Uh -huh. And then 
we had to stop because something happened and I had a car wreck and I couldn't do anything. So this wall right here is our bedroom accent wall. It's a hundred year old barn wood. Oh, nice. Did you put that up there? Yeah. Yeah. And we put the ship lap in, get the lights in. I built a fireplace in the front room. Oh, that's the cool. back yard. We're about to take out a whole wall, put in a new back door, double wind, double doors, all new, all oh, new flooring. Really? It's been a year and a half. Yeah. You got a picture of the fireplace someplace so I can show you as we talk. Where did you learn to do all that stuff? Uh, necessity. Oh, okay. You, you Little YouTube, YouTube University too. <laughs> you, you, because, like, to me, it's all it's all the same: cutting hair, building the wall. It's all architect. It's kind of figure out the the the. Well, I know you shake your head no, but <laughs> yeah. if you're, if for for a creative person, it's not that difficult. I mean, I do it right, but at the end, it looks right. That's it looks so good. But, oh yeah 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 as long as the end result is there i got you the kind of person that. i am th though is that like if, if i'm doing it wrong i get like annoyed so right yeah <laughs> Unfortunately, okay, I, mean, I have i have people that i can work with that are friends that are way more experienced than i am so yeah. i can um have them help me that's I, cool. I built the deck around our pool you know i built that deck mm -hmm. and then Oh uh, yeah, there's the pin bar. Show me pin bar things over there. This is our, <laughs> this this is our only. This is you see the fireplace. Yeah. Oh, it's a gas one. Nice. Yeah. Electric. We we built. We bought or, the uh, uh, electric. I forgot. Yeah. But that's the same wood that is. Um, there it is without the lights. I can't see. Oh, we could put it up, but oh, you don't know how to do that on the computer. No, I could send it to you, but. Okay. No, but That's I don't have my uh, Discord stuff in here. Yeah, I don't do all either. So, but so I did all that. It's the same wood that we had okay. here that someone gave us, and yeah, it's gonna be pretty nice. I think you're doing a good job. I like those, those little uh, the fireplaces with like the blue. The yep. lights are blue. Yep. Yeah, it's I like that. Yeah, we have a real one, and then we have two fire pits outside, right. and those are nice. But I do like to just turn it on sometimes too. Yep. Um, we have a question that I can't answer. <laughs> Foxy eighty ninety eight wants to know: Is Vulcan still dropping in June? We're not sure. It's Q two, right? Q two, Q two is all we can 42. say. Q two. Um, check okay, the so Discord. We, check the Discord. Yeah, you, check the Vulcan Discord. There you go. Q two. Uh, yep. Do you have any other investments like um, you know regular stocks, any commodities, anything like that? Nope. Not interested? Um, nope, because <laughs> um, I make more money in crypto. Mm -hmm. And when I watched the debacle of the AMC and how the hedge funds were backed up by the government and mm -hmm. didn't allow AMC stock to go what it was supposed to do, and they shut down the trading, I'm like, I'm done. Took mm -hmm. my money out of stocks and went full into crypto. My brother. Yeah, I'm still in a little bit. Yeah, my brother, on the other hand, he every month buys the same percentage of all, all his stuff. Yeah, all the I stock. don't even like doing that. I did um, set something up just like to save money for projects, like, um, right. you know, like stuff to do around the house. Like, right. we had to cut down like three or four trees this year or, or last year. That is so expensive. Yep. So I would just. You guys like, got big trees on your property. I've seen Daniel out there. We just filmed the video with the bugs on it. The bugs came in, those weird bugs. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, oh, was it those crazy bugs that were like yeah. taking over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have these trees. Like one of them, he's tree, he's a tree guy. So he was like, Well, I don't want to cut the whole thing. How about I cut it down? So he convinced us to do that. But that tree was is, is huge. It's like, what the heck are you doing here? Like, I don't know. And who plants trees in the middle of the yard? Like I don't know. I think it's crazy. So we definitely have chopped down. I've cut down a few, like well, the ones where like the trunk is only like this. Right, one. right. I just took the um the ch the chainsaw. Is it? Yeah. yeah. That that was a little rough. I I shouldn't have done. That. <laughs> I bet you hurt a little bit, right? Afterwards. Yeah, the vibrating through my back and stuff and my hands. I was just like, but I, you know, I wanted to prove to people I could do it, so I did it. And then um and then my my oldest son was chopping some down. Then Danny came and he chopped the rest down. Cause it was like, I was like, this is like a forest in here. Like we, right. we don't need all this stuff. But, um, and then I learned that you can't burn like pine in the house. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, because it, it like leaves the smoke I think or something. No, it's like from the sap. I forgot what it's called, but the sap gets released and then it starts to like climb up basically as it's burning. It climbs up the inside of the chimney and then it can build up and then it can it cause a fire. fire, catch fire yeah. Again? Okay, okay. Yeah, so I was like, oh, okay. So like we had all this stuff I thought we could burn in the house and we can't. <laughs> so I was like, whatever. We used it for like oh, the, the fire pit. The fire pit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's still yeah. crazy. And the dog had fun with it too because he was just like running around the whole yard right. and then lighting him up. But um, so how did you meet Daniel well, online, you know? Yeah, uh, I just stumbled across him one day early in that safety time and started watching him. Yeah. Okay. And then one he's, day he, he just came out? Yeah, he was just one of the days, in the early days, he was like probably the biggest, um, most vocal safety person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I just kept checking back with it and watching the videos. So mm -hmm. and then I've met some really cool people. I mean, I've, Daniel, I talked to, uh, a couple weeks ago, about for about an hour on the phone, you know? Yeah, he told me that. I was like, that's cool. Because I, I know, like, at first, I think you were a bubble when you first came on. Like, you didn't come on with your face, I feel like. And then you you started coming on. So what made you decide to come oh, on yeah. to YouTube? I've never I've never been a bubble. I just didn't know how, how to do YouTube. So, <laughs> you know, I do Instagram. I do Instagram. I got, like, 10,000 followers on my hair channel for Instagram. Oh, wow. What, so what is your Instagram? I haven't posted a video since COVID. I don't think since Instagram. So, what's your Instagram? Let's look it up. Here's my Instagram, Lori. Let me look it up. I'm, I'm about to, no, no, that's a salon. I have my own. I think it's just my name. I think it's just, I think it's T E R R Y. And then my last name is W H I D D O N. I haven't really posted anything in a long time, but I'm about to start because I'm changing locations of my hair again. Yeah, you said that. Yeah, so I'm about to start getting real active again. Yeah, it's just my name. The show oh, no, it says it's not available. Just there. Here. Here. Can you see that? Yeah, I clicked on it. Oh, maybe it's another one. No, it's saying it's not available. So it should be T E R Y and then W H I D D O N. Hmm. Yeah, I'll try again, but... Yes, there. I just looked at it just a minute ago. It's there. <laughs> oh, there you go. Find it? You, oh, you got a lot of people hashtagging you. Yeah, so I mean, you for can, some reason... You can just Google me and you'll find me all the place for hair. I mean, I've done... Yeah, I've been, I did. I've done, I've done a thing or two. I, I Googled you for... I mean, because for some reason... Maybe because I'm not yeah. signed in, I don't feel like signing in. Yeah, I, uh, so... Here we go. Is this your stuff? Um, been, that's yeah, that's my page. Yep, yeah, that's the low part. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look that's at that. Stuff. Who's that? Just a client. Yeah, that nice. is, um, that's the first one on my Instagram page. Is that actual girl? Yeah, mm -hmm. this one. Yep, she's the first one on my that's the last post I did. Was I do like a nine square? I did have a yeah. theme or a rhyme until later. Is that nice look, Lars, this yeah. nice one there. Okay. Okay. And the blue one. Oh, right I like there. the blue. Uh -oh, That's my see, daughter. They want me to, the, the, they want the me to log in. Yeah. The <laughs> blue is my daughter who just, who just made green. That's my daughter. That's my, my Yeah, that's hot. Yeah. Yeah. So. But yeah, you do great. I I like the curls. Thank I you. I think you know what you're doing because you know you never know. People say this and that, but looks right. good. Yeah. I like I like um Instagram. I'm not really that big on um on uh, Facebook or Twitter. But Instagram, that's my thing. IG, love it. I don't do Snap either. Like I don't have I was on there for a while, but it's not my thing. I don't have a Snap. I don't have a um, Twitter. I have a Facebook. Like I'll post hair on Facebook. I'll I'll post like I'm going live on Facebook. But yeah, if you, if you get on there though and scroll through there, you'll see a yeah a really really attractive lady in a gold wedding dress for a bridal show we did. Mm -hmm. That's my wife. My wife. We did it. Oh yeah, I'll check that out. I'll I'll go in there. I'll follow you guys because you know I I do go on Instagram. But yeah, so what actually made you decide to just come on YouTube like and start being on people's lives? Um, I was invited to come like join a little bit and like I don't mind talking. Mm -hmm. I don't mind being a part of, but because my house is such a wreck right now, like I'm sitting in my bed right now doing this. That's cool. I've done that before. No, the ability <laughs> Well, like in our office, my wife works from home. 
she has a three computer setup screen and can do all that. So once I get some things organized where I can get a less cluttered background, yeah, then I'll probably put more time in production and and and, I gotcha. and Chris Chris Crucy said he helped me do it. And um, yeah, he's a very a helpful star, guy. Yeah. I'm not trying to be a YouTube star, but I do enjoy being on lives, mm -hmm. you know, because it's it's fun and I get to share ideas and I get to learn a lot, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I try to, and Daniel's the most frustrating person to be on with, not not live, <laughs> commenting, because if you're not writing that stream of thought, he has so many comments you can't get on there to get your <laughs> thought on screen. You know what I'm saying? And it's not his <laughs> fault. You just can't answer everybody, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, that's that's you can answer everybody tonight because it's not blown up. So you can take your time and like when Chris is yeah. live, stop talking to everybody. I'm trying to catch up. Yeah, yeah. People don't realize how how hard it is. Like I know Odonato has said like so many times, Oh, it's not hard to be up here. It's not hard to be up there, but it's hard to talk to people and read comments and respond to comments and then talk to the people who are next to you like on screen so yeah it's it's it can be hard that's why i started doing the comments for him because i was like he's ignoring everybody people he's, he's asking people to. questions yeah, he's not trying to though yeah. right he's like, he's asking people questions he's like what do you mean or like you know whatever and he's not even seeing that people are responding because he's trying to stay up with the comments that he's missed but then there's comments at the bottom so i just was like you know what i'm gonna do this it's a I lot easier right and that's the best yeah. way to do that thing because people unfortunately think they're the most important when i type something on someone's screen i want them to read it but it doesn't yeah yeah and then I, feel, I feel i feel like ooh, I, he read it or they read it you know but <laughs> it's hard though to get everybody read mm -hmm. oh, thanks, chris yeah chris cruzy he's great he's such a supportive guy and i think that first of all i think that he looks way younger without the beard but <laughs> We never know. We're not, security. we're not gonna see that until there's like a charity or something. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe Vegas. But yeah, um, they were they were talking about that last night, like how much it costs to shave someone bald or to go bald. Yeah. And I was like a bitcoin, three bitcoin. I was like, just buy me a taco <laughs> dinner, I'll go bald. I don't care. You were tacos, that's such a Texas thing of well, I just say it. I just say it. <laughs> Hot dog. Now my wife on the other hand, like with you know, my wife said I'm cheap. I, I, I <laughs> but she hates me bald. She says I look like a ma uh, an axe murderer and I'm bald. Oh my gosh! What the heck? <laughs> I just have a I just have a presence. If I walk in a room, I just have a presence, and I have and I have a shaved head. Yeah, it really intensifies the presence. So. Okay. Because I scan um, the room like military. I I check. Gotcha. I just check. Out, I just I, I check out everyone in the room, see where my exits are, where the potential dangers are. Oh so, sheesh. Yeah, I won't. I scan in. the room, but then like I'm so absent-minded, like then I forget why I'm looking around and then I start seeing weird stuff like somebody's crazy hair or <laughs> or something like that, you know? This uh, Chris what's Chris says, say? I'll only shave my head if Terry does it. <laughs> does it mean like if I do it personally or no. if I do it individually? Because I mean I got clippers right here. Nobody I do said it right shaves now. my head. So I think he'll only shave if you shave his head. Not a problem. Yeah. When he's ready, I'll do it. And I'll film it. <laughs> I got. I think I'm going to Texas this summer anyway, because my grandmother moved there with my aunt. So um, they're due a visit. We haven't seen them in a couple of years. So yeah. Yeah, he said, you shaved my head. My wife said, it's going to be hot when you come. Oh, I know. I love the heat. I, I just got heat. back from, no, because I'm so cold. Um, I have uh, anemia, like, and it gets kind of severe. So um, I get freezing. So it can be blazing. Like when we were in Dubai, it felt so good to be outside. But I looked over and Dan was like visibly sweating. And I was just warming up because we were in the AC. Like it's so cold. If, it's above, if it's above 73, I'm sweating. No, I don't. Why I is probably don't sweat until like 90. Season. No, I got, it's probably going to be like 90 and the sun has to be beating down on me and then I might sweat. And it's probably only like a little bit of like a little drop, a little drop. No, I, it's, it's hard for you to get a droplet from here because okay. I got like hair, you know, but like, I might have like, you know, 
a little, little, little arm, just a little bit though, maybe. And that's got that I gotta be beating in the sun. Right. Or like if I'm doing yard work and it's like 90 degrees, right. then I'll sweat a little bit. Still not that much from the face because yeah. I glisten. I don't really sweat. I would keep my slot at 65 <laughs> degrees, Miss Glistening. Oh no, no. I'd be, I'd be shivering well, in there. People show up, they bring their blankets, and I cover them up. Nice, nice. But now that I'm moving, <laughs> I'm moving my my my. My business, I won't control that anymore. So I'll be sweating and you'll all be comfortable. Well, that's good. So uh, where is your business going to be and what is it called? Well, I'm actually going to join a corporation. Um, oh. I'm going to join a corporate salon and then it's going to be in a mall, actually. Yeah. All right. What's and it called? So, well, it's going to be the Aveda Salon at Dillard's, like the Dillard's store. And so... Some stores, some dealer stores around the nation have salons in them. Yeah. And they're all Aveda driven. In the first nine years of my career, I was an Aveda hairdresser. And since I'm 54 and I've paid uh, cash for every medical thing I've ever done, it's time to get insurance at 54. So I'm going to join corporate America. Yeah. And, and, and they're going to give me four and okay, which I don't need because I'm already, already in where I need to be like financially, but I'll take their 6%. You know, it's yeah. extra free money. Yeah. But more importantly, we'll have full medical coverage for my wife and my daughter and myself. Yeah. 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 I guess it's time. Um, insurance is good. I always had to be on insurance. Like, I don't know what I would do. I would probably be in so much debt, but um, that's good. So let's switch uh, switch gears a little bit. You knew this was coming. Yep. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Good stuff. <laughs> Pepsi is black Coke and disgusting. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I'll be honest, I don't drink either because right, I can't but have you caffeine. Did, but you used to drink Coke, right? I did, I did, and I love it. Even now, like, once the burn in a while. And the fizz and the burn. Yes, and you know what? I have, like, an upset stomach a lot, and it just, like, helps my stomach feel better. I don't know. I right. love it so good. Anyway, I'm going to calm down now. <laughs> That's my wife. Wife hadn't had a soda how many years, Lori? 2010. 2010 was her last soda ever. Oh, well, that's crazy. I still drink ginger ale, though. <laughs> yeah. like bubbly, and we went to eat at a new Hawaiian restaurant, uh, right? Hawaiian restaurant? And Hawaiian bro, how, it's a fast food restaurant, but it's like, it's, anyways, they had this root beer that we never heard of, and I like root beer as well. And mm -hmm. it tastes like real root beer because that smells so amazing. Should I try it? I'm like, take a drink. And she goes, oh, it's too carbonated. I hate it. But she goes, Ooh, burn. that tastes like real root beer. I'm like, mm hmm. Yeah. Because it's, it's a Pepsi place. I won't drink Pepsi. I won't drink, yeah. yeah. Any Pepsi products? No. You I know, drink a lot of juice. I'll leave the restaurant. If I find out it's Pepsi only, I'll get water. Yeah. No, I think I'll get juice. I'm a juice drinker. I drink 100% juice. Like Cranberry? Yep. Every day. I like yeah. grape and, um, you know, other stuff like that. But like, I'll yeah. mix them and stuff. But when I was in Costa Rica, I had a lot of watermelon juice. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah, like our watermelon up here is like watery, like not that much flavor. There was a syrupy. Yeah, it was so much Jeez. thicker. I mean, it still was like watery. Don't get me wrong, but it had more flavor to it. Flavor. It had more it color. Richer. Right, it was yeah. deeper. Aroma was deeper. The flavor. Was deeper. Yeah, it smells so good. And they also like when they blend it, they blend the seeds too. Nice. So yeah, apparently the seeds have like you know some sort of nutrients too. So that was so good. And I did have soursop juice. I think I was allergic, but I don't know. I was. Uh, I what, is was that? what is sour? What? Soursop. It's a crazy looking fruit. Sometimes they're like this big and they have like lumps down the there. They call it guanabana. Okay. It's really good for you. It's got like really, it's like anti cancer, all this stuff. But I, I don't know if I had that and it was like, you know, hurting my throat, or whatever. So I just ended up sticking with the watermelon. Um, but let's go to Batman or Superman. Yeah. I say I'm the only viewer. There's one person watching. That's how interested I am. Look, because I'm, I'm the only viewer. I don't know what uh, what channel they're watching, but on the other channels, oh, maybe, people. maybe they're on my channel. Uh. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna be the minority. I'm Batman all the way, one thousand percent. Period. Oh my Hard gosh, night. you're a traitor. <laughs> nope. nope. Why Batman? Well. We got into the night on Chris Cruzy's live, but okay. <laughs> um, I'm not big into fairy tales. I'm more into realistic things. Mm -hmm. There's a bigger possibility somebody who's a billionaire might be able to pull off a, a small version of that, of what Batman does. And 
the guys that trained the guys that trained uh, what's his name Christian Christian Bell for his Batman oh. role. Well, the same guys I had trained with in Spain. That's pretty cool. That's the fighting methods. Now, is it a complete fighting method? Nope. But there are aspects that work inside there that are really well. Yes. But my favorite Batman on the on the, on the series is yours, Michael Keaton. Michael they Keaton, yes, man, he's definitely the best. Like they should have, I don't and know, Clooney maybe some worse. passing of the torch or Clooney something. Was worse. Clooney was worse. Yeah, you know what? He would have been a great um, Bruce Wayne. Yes, but, but now not he couldn't do both. Yeah, and the best. yeah, yeah. I think what was that other guy? The guy you just mentioned before Clooney. Oh, uh, I said my, uh, Christian Bale. Yeah, Christian Bale, I think, was a good dark. Batman. Yeah, but not but good he, Bruce Wayne. He wasn't a good Bruce Wayne. He was, like, way too showy. Yeah. And I don't even think he's yeah. that showy in real life. Like, yeah. I don't know what he was doing. But Keaton, he was the best. Both The best of both worlds. I loved it. Let's check this uh, little bit of comments here. So we got, oh, there was a Moshi, or Moshi says a three few views. Okay. Okay, that was one. But it's 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 playing on different channels, Moshi. Yeah, I'm not worried, yeah, I'm not worried about that. Seifu Dad says, awesome. John okay. Carter says, in time, this channel is going to be very, very big. Miss Worldwide is a natural at this. Well, yes, thank you, was. John. That was very nice of you to say. The next okay. Oprah. Get your own network. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Chris Cruzy says, I'll give you that one. I think he's talking about Keaton. Yeah, we we, we talked last night. I mean, last night I was on with those guys, yeah. Was it last night? The night before. They all run together. Yeah, I know, I know. I try to I, I try to keep up. Because yeah, I do watch night. you guys. Yeah. I like the um I like <laughs> the camaraderie you guys have built and I like the banter and it cracks me up how Chris and Kryptonian just keep <laughs> kicking <laughs> each other off. And they said, Did you do that, Terry? I'm like, I don't know how to do that. Where's that button? <laughs> I think you have to be like a member of the like you have to give me permission to be like Yeah, you have to be on the team. I'm looking where's that, put you where's on that team. button. Now, all I see is like mute, stop. You know, around two. So. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty funny though. Like for me, it never gets old, especially when one of them's in the middle of a, a sentence or a nope. thought. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah, and then they can they can pick and tease and and yeah, it's all, it's all good. Yeah, it cracks me up. It cracks me up. But remember, you were saying something about um, you said you were gonna say something about your training when I brought up the Batman and Superman. Right. So the way Christian Bell fought in his version of Batman. Mm -hmm. Was, was a fighting method called the Casey fighting method. Mm -hmm. And I trained in that. I, I got as high as you could get in the United States yeah. before they camp, before they broke apart. There's only a few black belts in the U S and I was at the belt below that, but I went to Spain. I went there and became an urban's weapon instructor, which is a handful, of like five or 10 people in the whole mm -hmm. U S train weapons with them. Yeah. So no, you should do. Well, go ahead. I'll say that after. Go ahead. There's a lot of flaws in their fighting method, like any fighting method. And they made it more showy, more big, the more it became popular. But mm -hmm. there are some core principles that work well. And um, so if you out there as a martial artist, they're going, oh, you can't do that. That's stupid. I'll do this to you and I'll do that to you. Like, <laughs> it, it's, it's like, what's better? You know, this this crypto, yeah. that crypto. And I, I don't care about this stuff. Like, whatever. Yeah. Like, Odie, Odie and I, when we get free financially, we are right. going to, there he is. Yeah, yeah. He just we're gonna, it. we're gonna always say roll together. We're gonna roll, which means. Oh train. my gosh, my friend always says that, and my roll. my boys are like so uninterested. <laughs> we're gonna talk. We just we texted today before uh, before we I came on live, and you know someday he and I will um will get to practice together or, or yeah. share our ideas. You know I'm not really big into sparring. I'm 54. I have a lot of concussions. <laughs> yeah, and, and I don't want to get hurt. But right. right, right. Doesn't mean I can't I can't go. I just want to get. Well, you could do a little light combat, you yeah, know, yeah. make it look like I uh, share of ideas, share of ideas, because like, cause like I yeah. broke my left pinky finger fifteen times in one year, you know, and I, I'm trying to do hair. It's miserable, you know. Yeah, a little light contact. Enough to make nice. sure it works. Yeah, enough to make yeah. sure it works. Yeah, this is hey, my friend. Yeah. He talks about that stuff. He's the one who talks yeah. about the yeah. rolling. So, uh, well, he's there. So. What, what game master is that him? G master five thousand. Just say so, G master. Yeah. Yeah, G master. So does he train? Do you train BJJ? He well, trains well, well, jujitsu, but I don't yeah, think he, it's Brazilian. Will we pop back up. I'm gonna ask him yeah, question. he'll respond. So 
So I, I've trained some jujitsu or Brazilian jujitsu um, by the guys, by a guy who was trained by the Machado brothers, which are the cousins of the Gracies. Oh, he, yeah, he talks about them. I think he met one of them. He would have been in UFC one, but they forbid him to be a Gracie practitioner. Yes, mm -hmm. BJJ. So do you know Eric Paulson? Paul, P-A-U-L-S-O-N? Because he does catch wrestling, but now he has a system called Combat Submission, Re submissions, combat submission Wrestling. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a mixture of all that. Yeah. And that's what I've trained. I've trained more of that than BJJ. He said he met Royla. Nice. Big yeah. baller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Much he respect. always comes over and he's like, hey, do you want to roll? You want to roll? And what belt is he? Uh, what belt are you, G Master? Yeah, what belt are you? Blue? Maybe. I don't know. I forgot. Well, it take about two years per belt if you go full time. They don't, they don't give belts. You have to earn your belt. Yeah, you yeah, walk, yeah. When you walk down the row and they whip you with it usually. Oh my gosh! Well, I don't think he goes with that kind of. Well, no, that I mean traditionally, almost yeah, he's almost a blue. nice. Much respect. Yeah. You know Al Bundy, the guy plays Al Bundy. He, yeah. He's a black belt in jujitsu. Yeah, he, he's uh, G Master has told me about that, which I yeah. found to be pretty, like pretty shocking because the way he was acting, which I guess he's a good actor, he yeah. looked like a slacker, you know, sitting there. Yeah. So you just well, never know. He he went to uh, one of the Gracie's things in the early days. And he's like, oh, I'm big, all this stuff. And a 15-year-old boy choked him out. And then he signed okay. up and became a, um, a student. Yeah, Yeah, you can't mess around with 15 and 16-year-olds. I'm telling you. My they son, all the spunk in the world. They can go. Well, yeah, and they're almost grown. And they don't know their strength yet. So you got to yeah. be careful. I, um, I, I, I was saying, my son, you know, he keeps getting into fights. And I'm like, what the heck? So there was a fight, this last one. And a female teacher went in there and tried to break it up. Apparently, she got hurt. But like I said this before, if you don't know the kids and there's not, they don't respect you. Like, don't get in that if you don't know that you can break it up. You're, You're gonna, gonna get, get hurt. hurt. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I sent, would never do that. I sent Dano some knife training stuff. I did. Yeah, uh, he has it. If you want to look at it, but I sent some of the guys who've trained. I sent Odie some stuff. Like one suit I did. There's a knife training video I did for a knife company to have them bring it back out because they discontinued a certain knife. Yeah. And I was at a gun show and the guys were impressed that I could draw my knife faster than, than the most expert guy in their group could draw their gun. Nice. And they said, why don't you make a video to see they'll make this, this knife again. So I sent, I sent Dano and some other guys, some uncut training, like just us figuring out what to do. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, yeah. So I've got stuff out there. Well, I got a couple more random questions sure. for you, and then I'm going to let you go. Super so powerful. I know you're a gun guy, and I just heard that you're a knife guy, too, which sounds a little scary, but you seem nice. <laughs> I'm a good friend to have in a bad situation. How about that? Okay. Yeah, I'll take that. So are you a hunter? No. I used to be as a child uh, in South Dakota. Oh. I would, well, I, I was going to be in South Dakota. Uh, we did pheasant and deer and duck. Mm -hmm. And I was just at the age I could actually go carry the gun and shoot. We yeah. came to Texas. So all I got to do was carry the vest and carry the birds back home to be plucked and processed. And that was much Yuck. fun. Oh, I would hate Thank that. Thank you. Yeah, it was gross. <laughs> it kept me warm. It kept oh, my gosh. <laughs> but that's how I got my, yeah, anyways. That's but so, no, I, I, my son-in-law, one of my son-in-laws is a hunter. And they mm -hmm. process all the deer and they make jerky and they make the meat and, I they have like 500 that. acres and, you know, but they don't kill to kill. They kill to eat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what we would do. I would feed it mostly to my dog, to be honest, but um, I'm sure we would eat some of it, but I need to find somebody like that. My tree guy, he asked me, he was like, Hey, did your dog eat uh, deer meat or deer bones? And I'm like, he hasn't, but he'll try them. And he, he, so he gave me some, and then he gave me like a little bit of meat for us to try. I did not try it. I ended up giving it to the dog. Shh, don't tell him. <laughs> it's, 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 I get it. Because cause, cause they say it can be gamey, like wild. I think it's all how you process it and spice it like anything else. Like yeah. you take a really good steak and ruin it, or you take a, a, a cheap oh, steak yeah, yeah, yeah. and make it really well, you know? Yeah, that's true. But he I'm said I should put it like in a slow cooker or a pressure cooker. I'll do that. I just wasn't ready for it. And the dog we loved did, it. We didn't spaghetti. We didn't spaghetti. Do you eat venison spaghetti? Yeah, it's good. If you do it, if you process and, and flavor it right, I mean, yeah, 
like again, you can ruin good meat and you can make good meat ba- medium meat better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, escargot, escargot is good in spaghetti sauce. No, no thanks. <laughs> I, was, I was about to throw up. I have a big palate. I can eat about anything. I, Just, if I didn't have food allergies, I think I would. So when my my oldest, well, both of my kids, when they wanted to try things after they were a certain age, I let them. So my youngest son, he was like two years old. He ate shark. He ate all kinds yep, of stuff. Ostrich, yes. shark. Well, no, not yeah. ostrich. Not, not up here. Is <laughs> elk, well, elk, buffalo, bison. Bison. Yeah. Bison's amazing. Yeah, they're Get huge elk, animals. Pheasant, duck. I mean, deer. So, I just have so many allergies. I'm not, I can't spread out good? like that. No, I, yeah. I, 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 I mean, yeah. I just been in the right place at the right time. That's all. <laughs> I don't know. Some might say the wrong place at the right time. <laughs> well, I don't have any food allergies, so if I'm hungry, yeah, as long as it's not bite me first, I can probably I'll probably eat it. <laughs> bite me first. Um, Odonato says I'm watching from the beginning, so I'm way behind the live broadcast. But I'm cracking up about the Rick Springfield comment. My 25 year old daughter loves Jesse's girl. I will, oh, that's Jesse's girl, like from a yeah. movie, yeah, or commercial. You know what? It's funny because Dan, I was always like, he always laughs at me because like a song will come on uh, if he puts on like whatever his, whatever radio station. Right. And I'll be like, whoa, his, old man, his old man station. Well, he listens to all different stuff, young and old. But if a song comes on on his old man station, I'll be like, I didn't know this is a real song. I just thought it was from a movie. Right. <laughs> That's where it and came he, from. Yeah. yeah, he laughs at me because I just thought some songs were like, only made in snippet form. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I yeah. didn't know there was a whole song to them. I thought it was just that part and they wrote that for the movie like it was a jingle or something. So then I'm hearing all these other words. I'm like, what the heck? Right. I get it. <laughs> I don't know. That's just how it is. I, I've had some some weird thoughts. Like there's another rando one. Like when I was younger, like we're I'm from the city. So you know like the big buildings, there's always like white smoke coming out of them. Yeah. So I thought that those were cloud factories and that was making clouds. <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you what I just tell my kids, okay? And don't be offended. It's a good thing you're pretty. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> well, no, I just, my, da- my daughter would say something silly, like, silly. I was like, yeah. sure, you're pretty. Yeah, you know, I'll take that. I'll take that as a compliment. But I thought yeah. a lot of things. Yeah, that... I mean, as a compliment. I'm just, I tease yeah, that. yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. But like butterflies, I used to think, you know, you catch them in a jar, you poke yeah. the holes, and then I wanted to feed the butterflies, so I put a big chunk of butter in there. <laughs> yeah, it went well, it, didn't it? It started melting, and then it was drowning. <laughs> I was well, a little I'm this. I'm turning the camera so on her. I was so sad. I was like, he's dying. <laughs> and my yeah. mom was like, it's a butterfly, but they don't eat butter. And I'm like, well, who named it? <laughs> right, exactly. I was so mad, so mad. But I had a whole bunch of like my own little thoughts about life. And Me too. sometimes sometimes yeah. it worked, sometimes it didn't. And um, now no more catching butterflies. I just leave them out there. I think there are moths half the time anyway. <laughs> yeah, I we learned have, that too. We, we plant flowers around our, our backyard and in our front yard, some vines that actually attract butterflies and hummingbirds. So our oh, backyard is covered on a good a good summer day, spring day. Yeah. Covered. We have five bird feeders. We have ducks and geese that come to our backyard. And I, I live in this and I live in the city. But we yeah, the city. <laughs> downtown no downtown Fort Worth is a is two point five miles from my house. So I live in the city basically. But yeah. because we feed the birds they have a migration pattern. Mm-hmm. We have ducks that come to our pool in the wintertime and they, in, in, in the springtime, we have some geese that come occasionally, which is Yeah, I've cool. seen that. Yeah. Even like around here, maybe not close to here, but like a, not too far in Pennsylvania and stuff, I've seen the ducks and stuff do that. But we keep it covered, so, you know, we can't, they, they can't they go float, the They float on our cover because it collects the rain, so. Oh, gosh. I think that's cool, but you know what would happen? My dog would kill them. Because around here, there's like, let me just say this real quick. Biz Entertainment said, Terry, you did very well. Great interview. Thank you, Biz. Biz is always out there supporting all of us. Thanks, yeah. Biz. We Good appreciate job, you. Yeah. But uh, we have wild turkeys that are around oh, they're here. They're mean too, aren't they? 
Well, not to us, because our dog is a Your savage. Dog. What kind so, of dog is it? I heard how big it is. What kind is it? He is an American Staffordshire Terrier. So that's his breed. But he is, uh, everybody calls him a pit bull, but he's not the thin, lean one. He's the thick the one with the big blockhead. Okay, okay. Yeah, he's not crazy looking, but, you know, people are scared. But so are dogs. She's so, looking it up. She's looking it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you, when you see it, yeah, he's he's a, he's a cute guy, oh, yeah, but he definitely yeah, is. Is definitely he, is scary. He, is he the, the tan and brown, or what color is he? No, he's gray. He's gray. all gray. He has, like, except for the white patch. They all have that. But. You know, Benjamin Franklin wanted our, our national bird to be the wild turkey. You know that, right? Well, I mean, I guess that would have been an okay thing, but, but the they, won't, they won't even come in the yard. No, yeah. Only one. One came in the yard one time, and I was, like, I was like screaming because I was trying to get it out of there because my they're, son they're, was about to take the dog out. It would have been a bloodbath. He's already killed, like, I think eight things. Wow. Yeah, so you know, I, I yell at him and everything, but it just. Oh, <laughs> what bigger. are you gonna do? That's what they, they're terriers. That's what they do. There's a puppy. Yeah, one. Oh my gosh! Yeah, except for he doesn't have that gray. My dog's cuter than that, but you know. My, dog, <laughs> my wife is the biggest animal person, bar me none. Too. I'm allergic to so many of them, but animals love me. Yeah, like, her too. We walk. We go for a walk, and any dog in the yard, they want to eat me, and they're like, yeah. "Oh, look at your wife. She's so cute." <laughs> Yeah, like, oh, they I, just, I, is it? I don't I'm know. With I'm with her. Do I get a free pass? Or her? I get a free pass? No. I mean, they'll like not kill you because you're with the person they like. But other than that, no, oh, you just gosh. gotta beat it. Yep. <laughs> I do. I love animals, and I yep. like to help them and stuff. But I'm so allergic. I'm even allergic to my dog. But he doesn't have that much fur, and he's a pretty good guy. So he listens. He's wife says she wants this one. Yeah, they're cute. He looks like he's probably not going to grow up to be cute, though. But you have to be really good. Like, I'm strict he's with cute. my dog. My wife is a my wife likes the ones with the big ears. Now, we have, yeah, we have a hound dog. We, she wants a hound dog, but they're, they're noisy and they slobber. But yeah. all of our dogs have been rescue dogs after her first dog she had. We got married. Yeah. And then we, when our last dog passed, um, whether it's legal or not, maybe we have, a, we have a cemetery in our backyard, maybe, for our puppies. Um, whether it's legal or not. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, um, it depends on the state, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if you listen to this, it's, I've heard rumors. I'm not sure if you're in Texas, but um, we uh, the day our the one I I actually worked at the salon, and I got the dog from the homeless guys in the neighborhood. And yeah. I, when I first started, and he passed, and we 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 said goodbye, and within hours, a stray cat, a kitten, showed up, and so we put him aside on the side yard, the side door, and. We were feeding it and feeding it. Then he came in the house and went out, came oh. out. Never a cat in the house. And we have like five outside cats they feed. And we, we catch them and get them fixed so they don't make more. Right. One, <laughs> we can't catch. And they keep making mm -hmm. more, but they know where the food is. So now we have like a cat farm in our neighborhood. That's crazy. Somebody loves all animals. <laughs> I love animals too. I just don't love animals coming here that I don't claim. So right. I won't feed outside animals. What I'll do is, like, there's, like, the woods across the street. So I'll tell Dano and the boys to, like, oh, whatever. Food. Yeah, yeah, throw the food over there. Like, cross the street to, and throw it to make sure it gets over there. We, we, have two, we have two places we feed the outside animals. Plus, we have a tree that we feed them at. We have raccoons that show up, too. It's oh, my gosh. No. <laughs> and the possums. You know, so, yeah. And all the birds no. we feed. We spend sometimes more in a grocery store on the dumb animals we do ourselves. You should start growing some stuff. That's what I do. We and they ate everything. Yeah. Yeah. They ate and everything last year. Birds. So this year I'm trying to grow more. So yeah. we'll see. I want somebody to like come and do homesteading with me because I can't mm -hmm. do that much by myself. But yeah, um, you can maybe start um we have them here they do the the they share it, right? Where you um yeah. a community like garden. some people are looking for it. Yeah. So like we have we have a big land like, it's called a co op, right? Oh, uh, you can call it whatever you want. Some people call it homesteading because it sounds nicer, I guess. Okay. But yeah, so like you ask someone to use their land and blah blah blah. But I would totally let somebody use our land and share the stuff. I would yeah. do that. And they come and take care of it. I'd take care of it too, but I just can't do it all by myself because you know, oh, okay. but yeah, I think that's a great idea. So I'm gonna see if I can get that cracking. Because I think if I plant enough, the animals will eat their share and then we can right. eat the rest of it. Because right. they're pretty greedy and they don't really care about what I want. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I was confused because in Texas you can homestead your house and it's a property write-off, a tax write-off. Oh, 
yeah, no, I don't want to go that far. We, I like our house, and we no, have no, our it, parties. It just means stuff. it's gonna be your. It just means it's gonna be your, your uh, official residence. Is all it means. Oh, okay. You're not growing anything. You just yeah. in Texas, you could homestead your house. You pay less. You pay less property taxes, which means it's your your main residence. Is all basically. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I have some news. My sister just arrived. My army yeah. brat sister. So I'm gonna go hang out with her and see what's popping. It was All great right, awesome. talking to you and uh, getting to know you better. Thanks for being so open and honest. Do you have anything else you want to say to your viewers? They're your viewers, and thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. <laughs> other Daniel's, other Daniel's viewers. So thanks for having me on, and hope yeah. you enjoyed this. This is fun. All right. Well, thanks, and um, I'll see you in the comments. Awesome. And I didn't have to answer my superpower. I appreciate that. <laughs> yes, actually, I forgot that. Nope, nope, you brought it up. You gotta do it before I click and then Oh this. goodness. Um what is it? I would do I would do uh, a superpower. I would be fast like flash. Okay, I'll take it. And it's almost invisible, right? It's almost invisible. Yeah. yeah. And it's almost yeah. flying. Yeah, it's almost. Literally. He's so fast it's almost flying. So it's almost like I guess he can time travel too. Yeah, he could he could, he, he can multi well, I mean, yeah. But yeah, he can because he's I that like fast. Really I like the way you can read like the whole library like in thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah. Do your own research. Being, being your being being flash, doing your own research or any project. Like, <laughs> finished. I'm done. Yeah, that's good. That's a good thought. What did he say? Oh, <clears throat> he said the entire concept of belt colors yeah. was made up by Americans. Um, us when the Japanese started bringing karate teaching over here, because we need to see progress. We don't need to see it. People just act like it. I'll see progress when you're like chopping people down and shutting them down out of nowhere. That's that's progress enough for me. I don't need to see all the colorful belts. But Good, um, I don't have any, so there you go. Yeah, my kid's got belts. He didn't even care about them. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna go hang out with my sister. It was great talking to you and getting to know you. And if you guys mm -hmm. are just tuning in, you can come back or rewind it back to the beginning and check it out and uh, learn more about Terry. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.